Hi, this is Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and have a small office in Milwaukee. And I'm here today to tell you about hawthorn berries and to make a hawthorn syrup and cordial. And here we are with my friend Ann, Farmer Ann. We're at her farm and she's got a big, beautiful hawthorn tree. And that is what we are harvesting from today. You can see this tree is just very large. It, in the rose family, there are hundreds, I think, of uh, different varieties of hawthorns. They grow uh, quite wide variety of areas. And um, here in the Pacific Northwest, they grow quite, quite happily. I believe these are mostly introduced, but there is a native variety. This one is not a native variety. So we are going to just go over there and pick some of those berries. Now, hawthorn uh, is also known as Crataegus. Crataegus is a variety of species. Once again, these are from the rose family. And the flowers and leaves and berries are all used medicinally. Today we're harvesting the berries. This is, uh, this is fall. And uh, it, hawthorn tends to be kind of warming as far as an herb goes. And it has constituents including bioflavonoids and procyanidins uh, that are really considered to be some of the more medicinal parts of it. It's just a lovely little tiny uh, red apple. But it's got a flavor that's a little bit uh, less palatable, shall we say. It, it, it's a very mealy kind of feeling, um, tasting fruit. If you just bite into it, it's not very sweet, a little mealy, a little reminiscent of an apple, but not really quite tasty. Um, what we usually go for with the hawthorn berry is for its effects on the heart. This is considered a, a heart tonic. It's good for pretty much most conditions of the heart. Um, it's good for irritable and nervous people with with heart palpitations. It's good for heart conditions uh, related to heartaches and uh, spiritual heartaches from disconnection with God. And it, it just generally opens the heart to forgiveness of others and forgiveness of life events. And otherwise, it's just general for all the more typical heart diseases that you might um, think about. This is uh, things like um, heart uh, dyspnea, rapid feeble heart actions, valvular insufficiencies, cardiac hypertrophy, angina pain, venous stasis, congestive heart failure, um, hypertension is one that I often use this one for, um, endocarditis, coronary heart disease in general, um, relieving um, Anginal symptoms, I think I already said that. In general, it increases the blood supply to the heart. And it, it's very nutritive. It actually enhances the nutrition to these heart cells. Also very good for hemorrhoids, as it's also pretty uh, astringent. And it helps normalize arrhythmias. And just generally, most heart diseases can be uh, really helped by these hawthorn berries. Um, and research has actually found... Uh, some good efficacy in patients with cardiac disease that use hawthorn. It's generally considered a cardiac and cardiovascular tonic and generally improves overall heart function. It's diuretic, antiarrhythmic, uh, antiarrhythmic, <laughs> astringent, uh, especially if you go with the leaves, very, very astringent. It's an antioxidant, it's a cardiotonic and cardioprotective. This is just a wonderful one. Hi, Dr. Mindy Curie here back in my kitchen. And we are going to do some things with these hawthorn berries we picked out at Ann's farm. Uh, we're going to make a cordial with brandy, a nice uh, little after a hard day drink, shall we say, for, uh, for sipping. And then we're also going to make a hawthorn berry syrup. And that's really great for kids, no alcohol. Um, you can keep it for a while in the fridge and just uh, add that to any kind of delightful thing you want. Pour it on ice cream, put it on any kind of dessert, drizzle it on a little pie or 
on a stake or just all sorts of interesting things you can do with it. So let's get to those things. Let's start with the cordial because that's pretty simple. And that's just, uh, we're going to start by taking some hawthorn berries and cleaning them up. I'm going to pick out all the leaves and things that look like they've got too many bugs on them. They're a little dry this year, and that's, that's tolerable. But we don't want ones that look like they're obviously already rotten. That one's not very pretty. It's mostly black, so we'll get rid of that one. But just a little dryness. They're small this year. This year has had really bad heat waves out in this area. Heat waves so bad it killed dozens, I think hundreds, some odd people. But uh, that affected the plants and the hawthorn berries ended up being rather small. Um, I've seen other years where it's more moist during the summer. These can be twice as big. They could even be three times as big. Also different kinds of hawthorn trees will have different sizes of berries. There's some domesticated ones where the berries are quite a bit bigger. The haws, as they're called, actually. Hawthorn berries are also called haws. Oop. Here's another ugly one. Some of these get some bugs in them. Just want to find those ones and toss them out. Give it a good wash. Those are looking pretty good now. So let's grab a pretty jar. You want to find a pretty jar for a cordial because it's special. It's not, not for chugging with the friends the ball game. This is this is a Hawthorne cordial that will actually heal you a little bit if you're feeling some emotional distress or a heartache or or it will actually can be helpful if you have heart problems and you just want to have a beverage, an alcoholic beverage that isn't quite as bad for you as some. Um, this adds some benefit to a little bit of drinking. This one you do just take it in kind of a normal shot style or, or less, a little like you would a brandy. And it's, it's mainly a pleasure beverage. And so we filled that, our jar up pretty good. I think you can get a few more in there. Might as well fill your jar as much as you can. I'm going to take the brandy and just pour that on. Not so worried about macerating this the way I do with the more bulk hawthorn tincture. This is a cordial, and this is these are just going to seep there. I'm going to let that sit for a few months, and then you take it out on a special occasion. Maybe your best friend had some hard week. You just want to commiserate, feel the love. There it is. As always, put a label on it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is make a hawthorn berry syrup. And this starts out much the same way with washing the hawthorn berries. I'm also going to add in a handful of uh, rose hips and uh, a couple actual roses. It would be great to use wild roses, but all I had on hand right now is these uh, Don Juan roses from my yard. So that's what I'm going to use. And the rose... Um, as you think, the rose is associated with love, and love is associated with the heart. It is also has a lot of very high in bioflavonoids, which have been shown to do wonderful things for the heart as well, reduce blood pressure, um, 
ease some of the vascular problems. Rose hips, quite the same. Um, also high in bioflavonoids and vitamin C, um, and just everything rose is just wonderful to add in to any kind of a heart tonic. And the uh, the hawth hawthorn syrup is some is a heart tonic, as well as kind of a delicious food, good for heartaches too, emotional aid. So let's get to cleaning these guys up. I'm using four cups of Paws. Dirty, dirty little Haws. Another thing to note real quick here is that Hawthorne is not really used for acute illnesses so much as it's more of an adaptogen specific for the cardiovascular system and it's slow, action, slow acting, nourishing, and it's best when taken long term. Uh, that we're talking about more than three months. And it basically it helps maintain healthy arteries, veins, heart uh, tissues, it basically enhances the connective tissue structure of the endothelial lining of the heart, the blood vessels, the lymphatic vessels. This gives all these things a real resiliency when it comes to disease, normal wear and tear, injury, aging. And it's just really great for improving cardiac function in general. Okay, that looks like a really beautiful four cups of Haws. Let's move over to the stove. Hey, we're here at the stove and we are going to get these Haws um, simmering. So Got those haws that I had there, the four cups. I'm gonna add the rose hips. And I'm just gonna I'm just going to go ahead right now and add in the rose petals. You could be real precise and add them in later, but today I'm just gonna go easy on myself and just add it all in. I'm gonna add an equal amount of water in there and get that going just up to a very low simmer. You don't want this to boil because it'll start to boil off some of the medicinal compounds, but you do want to um, get it up to where it's just starting to bubble and then keep it down a little bit lower than that. Let it go at a low simmer for about 20 minutes just to get those berries all softened up. They're very hard, but they will be softer and then we will mash them the watch pot never boils, so let's stop this. Okay, this has been uh, simmering there for a while. Let's see what's going on in there. Ah, it looks real lumpy and soft. That's what we're looking for. Big gooey lumps of hawthorn berries. So let's uh, let's try to put those through a sieve and mash them out. It's a monster mash. <laughs> the juice goes down like a splash. Here it goes. Keep going, keep going, mash that up, rock it back and forth. It's going to take a while because we've got quite a big pot of these berries, but basically you want to separate out the um, kind of really hard nasty seeds and uh, some of the bigger chunks of of skin and, and pulp and whatnot from from the juices. Getting mostly kind of a, it is a pulpy juice at the bottom. This is not gonna be a really thin syrup. We're gonna keep mashing that till we get a lot of that going through. Mmm, mash, 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 yay. Ooh, I mashed so quick. 
<laughs> Getting all the goo out of there. Separating out the goodness from what's left over. Okay, we've mashed all that up. Now we've got about four cups of our juicy hawthorn juice, pulpy hawthorn juice. We're going to pour that back into the pot, get that heated up again. Ooh, there it goes, all back into the pot. Let's see. Turn it on. We don't want it to really boil this again. We're just trying to get that up to a nice, warm, low um, rumbling temperature, low simmer. And uh, now we're going to add the honey. We're going to add about 12 ounces of honey for that four cups of Hawthorne Juicy Pulp. Stir that up nice. Let it get up to temperature a little bit so that that honey gets distributed everywhere within the sauce. Syrup. I guess it's a saucy syrup. I use it as a syrup, but I guess it's also could be called a sauce. If you want a thinner syrup, that basically what you're going to do is just kind of boil that longer. Um, the longer you boil it, though, you will lose some medicinal components. But if you really are looking for that thin syrup, boil it quite a bit longer, let it reduce down a bit more, and then strain it even more, possibly through some um, cheesecloth, several layers of cheesecloth if you need to. But, uh-oh. I spilled <laughs> little too much in that. Gonna have to. Ooh, that's hot. Get that back in there. Any case, <laughs> yeah. I like it this way with a little bit of pulp. It's a very sweet and delicious um, syrup that I tend to put on delicious things. It can go on sweet treats, it can go on granola, it can go on meats if you like, um, mix it into beverage, pour a little bit in a tea, just a delightful syrup slash sauce. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. 
So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.